Welcome to Basic Bioinformatics, brought to you by the Sequencing Center. In this screencast, I'm going to show you one method of importing a bacterial reference genome into Genius Prime. And once you've imported the reference genome, you can do things like sequence alignments and variant calls and annotations and lots of other fun things. And so this is just one of many methods, and we'll show you how we do that. Uh, we're going to use a bacterial genome, uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and the uh, strain is going to be UCBPP-PA14. So we'll see if we can find that. One thing you can do is go into your web browser and uh, search for gQuery, G-Q-U-E-R-Y, and usually at the very top it'll bring up the gQuery uh, NCBI cross-reference database, the integrated database. And if we click on that, we should go to the NCBI integrated database screen, which looks something like this. And this is a site that integrates many, many different databases into one gigantic database, basically. Uh, what we want to do here is search for Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And we're going to take out this particular strain, uh, get rid of the period, and do a search on that. And we'll see what it brings up. If we scroll down just a little bit here, we'll see that it's populated these different categories. The one that we're most interested in is under genomes. And if we go down to genomes, there is a subcategory called genome, singular. And we'll just click on that. So it looks like they brought us Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And uh, if you scroll down a little bit, there's a lot of metadata here, uh, the reference genome, the size of the genome, a dendrogram, and so on. Uh, I want to point your attention, though, to this line where it says all 4,761 genomes for this species. That's a lot of genomes. So what we want to do is click on where it says browse the list. So the list is hyperlinked, so we'll go ahead and browse the list and see what that brings up. Okay, and we can see there are a lot of depositions for Pseudomonas aeruginosa. A lot of different strains are listed here. For reference genome, note in this line, there are different levels of assembly. So there are complete assemblies, fully annotated, fully finished genomes. There are chromosomes, which are not quite fully finished, I believe. And then there are scaffolds and contakes. If you look over here, we can see the total number of uh, deposited genomes. What we want to do is unclick contigs, and you'll see this number decline a little bit. We're filtering out a lot of contigs there. We'll unclick scaffold. You'll see this number go down again. We'll unclick chromosome. This number goes down to 189. So what's left here are just the fully finished complete genomes. These are probably all candidates for a, ref for a really nice reference genome. What we'll do next is sort, uh, we'll rank order these, sort descending by the strain column. And uh, then what we want to do is search for or scroll through here until we find, um, let's see if I can do this. Go to the next screen, go back. And we're looking for uh, UCBPP PA14. And there it is. So in this particular case, this is the reference genome we're trying to find. And what we want to do now is look over to the right. And we'll see that there's, there's a couple of listings here. The, uh, the NC is the uh, RefSeq accession number. And then right next to it is the GenBank CP accession number. Presumably, these are two identical sequences deposited in the RefSeq database and the GenBank database. They, they should be identical. What we want to choose is the uh, NC underscore 008463.1 genome. So if we do that, we'll just click on that, and it brings up another screen here that shows the um, NCBI reference sequence, uh, you know, 8463.1. And this is the Pseudomonas aeruginosa with the uh, PA14. Now, if we look down here, this is just a summary screen, basically. We don't see any sequence here, okay? We need the sequence. So this is not quite intuitive, but here's the way we're going to get it. 
If we go up to Send To, click on that, we want to leave the complete record, uh, the default chosen. For destination, we want to choose File because we want to get a file out of this. And importantly here, down in the Format section or the Format drop-down box, we have several options here. What we want to get is GenBank Full. Make sure we get full because that includes the uh, nucleotide sequence, the reference sequence, as well as annotations and metadata and other things that can be useful later on. And then we create the file and we should see it downloading that. Uh, the default naming convention is uh, always a sequence.gb.txt. So we'll give that a few seconds to download. Okay, it looks like the download is complete. And so what we want to do now, I'm going to have to minimize this a little bit, I think, here. Uh, we want to, in this case, on the Mac anyway, we want to uh, drag and drop this onto the desktop, clear this out, minimize our browser. Now, one thing we need to do here, or at least we want to do, is rename this file. Okay. <clears throat> and what we normally do to make this easier is rename it to Pseudomonas aeruginosa ucbpp pa14. Okay. And we want to get rid of the, um, the file suffix dot text. And we want to call this gbk which means it's a, that's the suffix for a GenBank file format file. Now, in our case, we happen to be using Amazon AWS Cloud, so we need to push this file to the cloud. So we want to drag this file over to WorkDocs, move it there, and then in a couple of minutes, uh, we'll see this file syncing up uh, with AWS Genius in the cloud. So we'll wait for that to finish. Okay, so it looks like this file has been synced to AWS. So now we're going to log into AWS and uh, look at Genius, and then we'll come back in a second when I do that. I've logged into AWS, where we host uh, Genius Prime in our case, and I've already launched Genius. We're in the Genius screen, actually. Uh, we'll take a quick look here on WorkDocs, and we can see that our GBK file has been uploaded to the cloud. What we want to do now is import uh, the reference sequence into Genius. So in our case, uh, we already have a directory set up called sample documents. If we drill down a little bit, we have another doc subdirectory called genomes, and below that another one called bacteria, where we've already loaded a number of uh, reference, reference genomes. The way we do this is we just go to File, Import, from file, find our GBK file, and import it. The import takes just a couple of seconds in most cases, so we'll just let this one finish. And there it is. So this is the actual uh, Pseudomonas reference genome. And uh, we can take a couple quick look at it. We can, we can draw all the way down if we want, see the actual reference sequence itself. We can scroll out just a little bit. We'll see some of the genes, gene structure come in. If we keep going out, it'll circularize eventually because it's a bacterial genome. And we're back out to the beginning. And at this point, we've got a reference genome imported into uh, Genius. And we could use this for sequence alignments and variant calls and many other things. So basically, that's how we import reference genomes into Genius. Thanks for watching this episode of Basic Bioinformatics. If you found this helpful, hit the like button and we'll see you in the next video.